السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام سعیدی آئی فیس ملٹیپل ٹائپس آف ٹاکسک سچویشنس ان آر ایکسٹینڈیڈ فیملی شیخ آئی ڈو ٹرائی ٹو ایکٹ آن یور ایڈوائس آف فار گیونگ پیپل بٹ اٹس ڈفیکلٹ وین دیز پیپل کیپ سینگ نیگیٹو اینڈ ہرٹ فل تھنگس سم ٹائمس دے جسٹ وانٹ ٹو انسلٹ اس تھرو سم تھنگ دے ڈو می اللہ فار گیو می بٹ سم ٹائمس دے جسٹ وانٹ اللہ ٹو ڈو سم تھنگ ایکسٹریملی بیڈ ٹو دیز پیپل I have seen and heard enough. I can't bear any more. Mm. What, what is that? This Southeast Asian culture? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like that. Something. You know the problem uh, with, with the... It's called Southeast Asia, Pakistan, India? Yeah. What is it called? Yeah. Southeast, Southeast Asia. Asia. Southeast Asian culture, why they have so much difficulty is because they marry family. So you have no escape, right? And become so interwound and so difficult that uh, this is the condition, you know, uncle, aunt, uncle, aunt, every everybody's related. So you're so interlocked that every issue becomes a very difficult issue, very extreme issue. And these are the, the problems that uh, greatly affect this culture. Because in other cultures that don't have that, you don't have the same similar sort of family dynamics. When one set of relatives bother you, you generally stay away from them and you go to the other side. They're generally more peaceful. But when everybody is, is all one relative, then there is no peace. You go, here's an uncle yelling at you, you go there, the aunt is yelling at you. If you go in the middle, both are yelling at you. So it becomes very difficult and that's the dynamics of what you see from this culture. That's why their questions are always very sort of extreme, that they just can't tolerate anymore. There's just so much sort of difficulty from this culture. And you know, this is uh, the situation that becomes very toxic. And that becomes the, the difficulty of, of the, the particular culture and the particular things that the culture does. But either way, be patient and be meditating and contemplating and learn to, to be khalwadar anjuman that no matter what condition Allah puts you in, to find your own peace and sort of bubble of… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Of reality and talking and sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me. So until somebody throws a punch at you, that's when it's very dangerous. But talking doesn't have a pain, it's aggravating, it's insulting. So in, in reality it is not as painful as people trying to make everything dramatic. Again from that culture everything is very dramatic. That ooh like one grape and everybody has to get drunk. So the, the concept is that when people are talking you just learn to shut off. And you, you play a chess game that before you enter into that place you know who's going to be saying what because it's usually the same characters. And Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change themselves. So there may be a thousand variations of trying not to be a nukht and I think you're going to try to find 999 of them because that's all they want to say is that this way is to be a nukht. Now you can come up with a thousand ways in which you don't want to be a nukht but you don't need to ask the question, just don't be a nukht, don't listen to me. You don't need me to say, oh yeah you have an exception to the nukht policy. 
it doesn't work that we have not somebody who can to to rule with Allah. Allah set a system for us to be nothing. And I don't change the condition of a people until they change themselves. So I have to change myself for my condition to change. Then they came and taught us that you have to be a nukht because the nukht are like awliya. And then what we described the, the week before, nobody brought it up, was a baby. So everybody knows that a baby, because people say, Shaykh, I don't understand really what that power is. They say, yeah, you do. Anybody who's seen a newborn baby, this is nukht power, complete nukht power. On airplane, we'll flip the whole airplane upside down because if that nukht starts screaming, everybody is agitated. N not only angered, agitated because I feel something's wrong. Either the, that kid can't breathe, can't eat, something stuck in its mouth, it's hungry, maybe it has air pressure. How is it affecting all of us just by its sound? Because in, in his heart he's very close to Allah or she's very close to Allah It puts a duress into Allah's signal and Allah activates everybody on the plane to be agitated. So this is a power of a nukht for people to understand. And they are the closest to sainthood that humans can understand because they just came from Divinely Presence, pure and purified. So are we, we became a little bit bigger, so they're coming uh, on this earth. I think Sayyidina Jalaluddin Qaddasallahu described three states of humans. They come on the earth like a vegetable in taslim, complete submission and they get everything they want. At some point they grow up a little bit, two, three and now the bad nafs comes. And either they're going to evolve from this vegetable state into satanic state or angelic state. The satanic state is when the nafs becomes too strong and then that person now is developing with a very strong and bad nafs. And the child will be like we said a, a cute little cub, you say he's very cute, look he breaks everything, very cute, he scratches the walls, very cute he breaks the TV. Well tomorrow this is going to be gorg, a wolf. And he's going to break you and everything in the house, the same thing, he's not untrained. But there are characters that uh, they start to grow up, they become angelic, very soft, very quiet. And the world tries to destroy those because they're soft, so they have to be nurtured and, and sheltered and protected. So it means that these are a deep reality, everybody has to try to be a nukht. No, we don't need to find excuses. <coughs> and every possible version of an excuse that I don't want to be a nukht. Give me a permission to go and yell and scream at somebody. But you know my permission doesn't mean anything. It's a matter of do we want to achieve what Allah wants and go back to a state of like a child, the innocence and futuwa of a youth in which people are going to say bad things and we stay quiet. People are going to insult and we stay quiet. And eventually that person becomes very powerful in their heart. And I'm sure maybe people have met relatives like that. Very pious relatives, they start to insult them, break things, all of a sudden you see the person crack their tooth at the table they were talking so much. They don't have to say anything. But if that person get angry in their heart, you know Allah makes upside down the house. And they didn't need to say anything, they just stay quiet. And you start talking, talking, <coughs> all of a sudden you break a tooth, something happens, they slip, they fall. Means Allah is going to bring retribution in a way that you know people understand. So we've all seen people that are very pious and if they stay quiet things are dangerous. And especially if you're going to sit and ridicule and mock them and try to harm them and they stay quiet and quiet, it's actually to your detriment. So when they do answer back then not that much punishment is going to come because they took the hand, they took the issue in their own hand. But some are very pious and they stay quiet and they mock them, they pretend like they can't hear and they talk about them and they go to a party and they mock them and on the way going home they get an accident. You think Allah didn't uh, give retribution fast and swift? So no, the nukht is, is very powerful. The nukht is not a state of, oh we have to be dominated and beaten by people. No, the nukht is, is the sainthood, the station of sainthood in which Remain silent, be quiet, not abuse, abuse you call police, but the abuse of words and verbal and, and, and images and actions and looking at you, you stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. 
you become very powerful in closeness to Allah And that's more powerful than uh, yelling, screaming and becoming a, a one again and, and entering the egoism. And the egoism has no power. And that's why we gave the first example was a boxing match because if a, if a feminine energy decides it's going to become a one and try to yell and scream and it becomes a boxing match. And the other person becomes like a bear and they start to harm people, that's not of any benefit. But stay quiet, stay quiet and Allah begin to give you tremendous power. So this is the way of the tariqah, the shaykhs are under the same discipline. You stay quiet, stay quiet. Somebody want to insult them and uh, ridicule them, stay quiet, stay quiet, doesn't matter. Let, let Allah handle the situation and things will happen. So alhamdulillah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as From Chile. Chile is cold up there, huh? Sayyidi, what happened to us when we die? Can the soul of common people move? Are we in a deep dark dream or are we, we are awake and can see what is near us? Mm, spooky. <laughs> you have to get the meditation book, Timeless Reality inshaAllah. <coughs> on the website we have articles on khalwa and seclusion. So everybody is going to do 40 day seclusion. Believe you don't believe everybody going through the 40 day cycle. As soon as you enter into that grave, you're going to take a companion with you, it's your deeds. So your deeds were good, then lights of companions of light, they accompany you into the grave and these are all you'll find them in the hadith of Prophet <coughs> Those whom their actions were bad, the companion will be the bad guys. So imagine all the evilness that our people are doing and Allah will make it to take a shape and enter the grave with them. And the whole time inflicting horror upon them. So what's going to happen for those 40 days is dealing with those issues. So if it's bad, they're going to see bad, they have to clean the bad, they have to go through all the, the cleansing and they're going to live their whole tariqah life in 40 days and each day may be like a thousand years Allah says or one day can be like 50,000 years. So all of this is 70,000 times more difficult to do your seclusion in the grave. So that's why we live a life of seclusion. No ta'ala arba'een, no ta'ala itikaf, no ta'ala wa suluq wa siyam fi hadil majlis that at every moment Ya Rabbi live my seclusion time now. As soon as I enter the majlis I made intention for seclusion. As soon as I pray at home I made intention for seclusion. And I'm meditating and trying to find my bad character. So at least the time in the grave is minimal and I was taught to have an immense love for Prophet then I have now intercession. So then that grave can become quickly illuminated and imagine then a grave that's illuminated. It's filled with lights, you're being visited by those whom you love, you're, you're uh, uh, ashiqeen, Prophet nazar in your grave. It becomes luminous. What happens then if it's luminous? You're free, go move where you want. And then you want to sit with other awliya at their graves and you want to go to this pious maqam, you want to sit in Medina with Prophet These souls are now moving and, and doing everything in this worldly light, in the world of light. And then they want to visit all their loved ones because now they're free, they have these blessings and then they begin to follow them into their homes and pray for them. So this is uh, the immense benefit and power of good deeds, good actions, good thoughts. And heedlessness and neglectfulness to neglect the grave is horrific, horrific. So that's, that's what answers that question. We do good, think good, be good, you see good, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi can you please give us some examples of the traps of Dajjal that could be appearing in our daily life like the news etc. The traps of Dajjal, just watch television. That's the traps of Dajjal, we've, we've, all our talks have been about the traps of Dajjal. 
the aqidah of the Wahhabis is direct, uh, totally taught by the Dajjal. And they now even claim they have an affinity with uh, the Dajjal people. So the, the, as far as our belief system, yeah, the Dajjal's uh, school of thought is there. So if you listen to that school of thought, everything they talk about paradise is hell. And everything they talk about hell is actually a paradise. Because they don't like the praising on Prophet they don't accept the Mawlid but they accept the rave concert. So yeah, it's all in our lives, we see it everywhere. Watch television, Dajjal. Watch, uh, oh look in department store they have uh, a whole gender confusion for little children, Dajjal. Uh, wars that are on the earth right now, completely Dajjal. The uh, anti-Islamic uh, propaganda, Dajjal. What, what is not Dajjal is if you can define that, we can't find that yet. So everything is Dajjal, everything, everything on this earth. Medicines all from Dajjal. Food in the lands of Dajjal are completely Dajjal, right? They would be, Dajjal is deception. So in his lands food would be abundant but not real food. So we described that before, right? So watch a video on Netflix called Food Inc. The entire food system is cornstarch, colored and molded into different foods. You buy ketchup, it's cornstarch, there's no tomatoes in it anymore. You buy bread, it doesn't go bad. It just sits there for three weeks, four weeks. Anything you eat from that system is completely artificial food. That's dajjal, deception. Nobody bringing it from a farm anymore straight onto your plate. It's all been manufactured. You buy these cakes and desserts, they sit for years, they won't, nothing will happen. <laughs> yeah. Before you buy a cake it would go bad in at least four or five days because it had flour, there's no flour. Nothing, completely synthetic. They say the meat are scraps of things that they put a special glue, they bind it and it looks like a steak. And these are the scraps. And they say it's completely synthetic. So no, what is not Dajjal? So it looks like a abundance but very toxic, very poisonous. So that, that is deception and deceit is everywhere. What's not a deception right now? And that's the love of Prophet the Muhammadiyoon. If they don't have the love of Prophet they are part of the problem. Even in Islam if they don't talk about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they are part of the problem not the solution. So oh mashallah this shaykh he talks like this, he talks like this, end of the world this, end of the world this, this is where Juja Majud are hiding, this is where this one… That but if there's no mention of Prophet as our nijad and our key, that person is a part of the problem because he's not giving a solution. The people have to know the solution is that they have to run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad where you will find Allah, the Allah of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah because many will claim they're with Allah. Couple other parties are saying, no we're with Allah too. And the other one says, yeah we have Father, Son and Allah ghost. But no they're not with Allah. So the La ilaha illallah is with Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. So we, this is our key of safety from Dajjal. We said the gray would disappear, now you see that on a daily basis, the gray is going. People thought, oh there'll be so many different shades, they said, no it will be white and black. So then they hire somebody to a satanist to make clothes now and if you don't accept it you get cast out. CEOs will lose their jobs if they don't propagate that system. It means no more gray, they have to do it, they have to take that pill. Then there'll be alam al-Islam and the world of Islam that says, absolutely we've got nothing to do with you people. And they'll move this way and the other ones will move that way, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, Sayyidi what is the reality behind feeling like time is collapsing and Prophet is here right now among us inshaAllah please forgive my ignorance and blindness. 
No, alhamdulillah, this is what we just said. Time is collapsing, everything is collapsing, dunya is collapsing and only the truth will remain. If we describe everything as dajjalna, so you look, the food is fake, the TV fake, their knowledge is fake, their history fake. Say Sayyidina Musa was black, this is a big shock for them. All their movies, everything was fake, every history they told you was fake. So now in the, in the face of the kingdom of Allah coming, they're now exposing every fake because the truth is not fake. The truth comes and says, no, 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 this was all fake. These knowledges were fake, what they taught you was fake, the history they said is fake. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum dear Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of dementia? Is it a blessing or a curse for a relative? Thank you Sayyidi for everything. InshaAllah. We have talks on that when Allah describes we take you back to a feeble state. <coughs> that Allah takes people back to a feeble state. And if we follow energy and the understanding of energy is that if you activated your heart in your life and your energy base is based on your heart, your zikr, your muraqabah, it is a power source that illuminates everything. So when the heart is active and lit, that's why the shaykhs that their hearts are open, as they become older their regular speech may have nothing. But as soon as they connect, it's already illuminated on an eternal battery. As a result, it will use the faculty of their head to bring out their knowledges. But the actual physical function may be starting to slow because the bodily function takes its course. They have like maybe forgetful things, they forget some dunya things. But the heart when it's lit is continuously sending signals out. Now dunya people they didn't learn that. So Allah describes them, they carry their knowledge like a donkey carrying books. Meaning what? They were taught them to memorize. So they go to school and they, they say this, this uh, course, memorize, 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 memorize. So they put all the energy upon the head and all of their ability on their head. So what happens then when they get old and the neurons are not firing correctly because they don't have an energy anymore in their head. They were not trained to use their heart to send energy, they were trained just to compute through the head. But this only has a limited time and it's, it's firing off and it's neuron and it's receptors, they're all getting old. When it's getting old there's no more computing at the head and they didn't activate the heart. So what happens then their head shuts down, they, they're not able to access the memory files, they're not able to access any information because they never trained to access through the heart. So they use the wrong device with the wrong type of power and as a result power diminishes and, and things begin to happen in life and they can't access it. They no longer make sense, they can't remember things. So that's why Allah teaches the servant, illuminate your heart because Allah's house is the heart and the heart becomes eternally lit. Because what Allah turns on in their heart never turns off. So they had an article on a, on a nurse that was dealing with somebody with like dementia or, or, or what was it, one of these situations said it was shocking to them because if the family came and talked to the person, nothing. Come salah time the person's in complete prayer, every time, wash, wash, make complete recitation, all the recitations. And it's shocking, the nurse said, I witnessed this, I accepted Islam. That when it came to physical things he was like he didn't care to talk with people, you know, who, who are you? Maybe he didn't want to see those relatives <laughs> coming for their inheritance, who, who are you? <laughs> so we did nothing. But he said, as soon as it was prayer time this guy was up, he would wash and he knew his recitations, he prayed and he went back onto his bed again shut off. <laughs> so means if Allah give the heart light, Allah doesn't take that light from the heart with good character. 
But these people only want to use their head and the head shuts off. It's, it's a piece of meat that goes bad and goes old. But the heart is illuminated with Allah's uh, lights and blessings, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi I usually get into bizarre situations in my work that I cannot find the solution. What should we do for peace in life? <laughs> get the meditation <laughs> book, <laughs> start making your muraqabah. <laughs> yeah. If you're coming new then alhamdulillah this is Allah guiding you. Then get the, the timeless reality, make your connection and uh, get the energy that you need and this is the, the main focus because people now are feeling depleted. So this is our life, 35 years of doing this and we've met ulama and representatives from around the world and different people. Remember one that came here from a very popular uh, Pakistani scholar, said, I feel nothing in my heart. With all my ibadah and my worship I feel nothing. I said, because you don't do muraqabah. Because you and your own faith probably gets old like an old shirt, it's got a lot of holes in it. But you have to be in a system in which you're completely and continuously energizing yourself. You have to have been trained on how to call upon these heavenly souls, how to keep the, the power and presence of these heavenly souls. Well, kunu ma sadiqeen, Allah is ordering us in Qur'an, throughout Qur'an is kunu ma sadiqeen in many ayatul kareem that we use for tafakkur. Uh, many, many ayahs of Holy Qur'an is describing to keep this company and keep this system. Why? Because Allah is not caring for the physicality so it means that these souls He knows they're alive and as a result they are connected and all around you. And then you turn your heart to receive. If the radio can receive signals from thousands of stations, you're telling me that you don't have that ability to do it? Well then shame on you because you're less than a radio in Allah's way. You're less than Toshiba's radio or Sony's radio or Panasonic radio, why? How did they build a device that picks up radio signals in the atmosphere? And you can't sit with your heart and connect and Allah makes it so easy the awliya come to be present with you, right in front of you. And your heart has to connect with them, feel the vibration within your heart, believe and keep connecting, kunu ma sadiqeen, keep the company of truthful servants because they're powerhouse of energy. And as a result you be energized. They sent a, a video of a lady who died and had a dog, a little puppy and very, very close to the dog. And the daughter's going to the graveyard to visit the, the mom's burial site. Put the dog down, ran. The dog ran and the girl is following the dog, run, 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 run to the qabr. Yeah, because the animals based on love, well Ashabul Kaf didn't have love. The creature has a love for the master, whether alive or dead it didn't mean any difference for the creature. He senses the soul of the lady because the dogs can see souls and ran to the grave to be with. As soon as he got near the grave was rolling in it like he was in the arms of that person. So Allah has so many signs that, no this, this world is real, the unseen world is real. If the creatures and nature can connect to them, how you can connect to it? The dog can feel the energy of the one whom he loves, is in tune with the energy of the one that they love. Creatures and, and cats and oh, everything, birds, radios can pick up signals, we can't do that. So it means then our training is deficient and we have to open our, our heart to the world of light. If you pick up your signal from the world of light, good God, imagine then what Allah opens for the servant. They can feel the presence of many holy souls. And if they sit and make their muraqabah and then they make their meditation, many souls begin to visit them, pious souls begin to visit them at their location. Their homes become like maqam of awliya. Because when these open-hearted servants whom are trying to improve themselves, their homes become like a light. And when these awliya are traveling and moving through these dimensions, they stop in those environments and pray to bring tabarak and blessing for the inhabitants of that home. Because Allah throughout Qur'an is also saying, have you made the ascension? 
means trying to lift yourself up is a big, big movement in the heavens. That Allah is saying, have you tried to make your ascension? Means all the heavens are excited when a servant decides to leave shaitan and move towards Rahman. So the one who's sitting and trying to connect and trying to make their lives better, put their sajada, make everything, Allah has these servants pray there. When you see these lights of these people trying to improve themselves, pray in their homes. And as a result of praying in their homes, the homes become like maqam of awliya. That's why I say holy places are extremely powerful. You don't need the shaykh to be here, the shaykh's heart and love is here. As a result many awliya are always praying here because they're not going to pass and Allah is going to ask them, how you passed that area and you didn't pray there? They're countable. So it means this, this world of light has its own immense realities. So it can't be understood but understand the, the people of adab and the heavens of adab, the reality of adab. It demands that, that these souls appear, they, they present themselves, they attend the majlis, they take the burdens of people, it doesn't cost anything from them. Once they left their physicality all they are are lights. So they want nothing more than to serve Allah in a khidmat. What's the best of a khidmat? Attend the majlis of zikrs and sit there with them, take their burdens and make everything to be light for people. So that Allah is happy with the servant and now they can try to ascend even stronger inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Dear Sayyidi Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi was wondering, Dear Sayyidi, is Jahannam a physical place or a station or a state? In the spiritual world what would be the difference? And Jahannam is physical, spiritual, eternal, real. So there's Jahannam on earth, uh, torture cells, every night they're torturing people. The earth is filled with the horrific places of people doing horrific things. Not now they're just finding these things. There's tunnels where they have uh, abducted people and doing horrific things. So Jahannam is very physical. And spiritual, we know that in the realm of the world of light we just described in the qabr, then there is going to be a cleansing for people whom did wrong and put wrong upon themselves. Only by the cleansing can you separate the two. So if Allah give you a very pure gold but you decided to make it to be dirty with charcoal and with every type of badness, there's going to be a little bit of heat to separate the bad from the gold. Otherwise how are you going to bring impure gold into the paradises? So we know that on this earth you have to apply a heat to separate elements. So that heat that you apply it separates the good from the bad. So as much as people put bad upon themselves it's not all about punishing them because imagine the reverse is, you don't want me to clean you for here? No, then your abode is here forever for all of eternity. But his rahmah and mercy is, no I want to take you to paradise, why you made yourself dirty? So you tell your kids, if you don't wash you can't have dinner, so I'm not washing then you're not eating because I can't let you into the house dirty like that. But it's your mercy saying, I want you to eat, could you please go clean yourself off? But people viewing it, no why will you don't let us to eat when we're dirty? Because you can't. So the concept of this Jahannam is both physical, spiritual, everything because we know that there's hell on this earth right now, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifu wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need, your support is greatly appreciated. 
also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.